Write down your objectives. It makes all the difference. But if you write something down, it somehow sends a message to the brain and makes it more concrete that this is something that you actually need to do and something that you must act upon. Hi there guys, my name's Rob and I'm an English teacher from Yorkshire, which is in the northeast of England. In this video, we're going to be talking about setting useful and meaningful objectives for the year of for the year ahead. If you're anything like me, round about this time of year, you start to look back on on the preceding months and kind of wondering, you know, where did the time go? Well, you know, how, did I get done everything that I had in mind to do? Good time to sort of sit down and take stock of what's happened and why and, and, and make good plans for moving ahead. And part of that for me is setting good objectives that are going to serve me well in the months ahead and keep me focused on what I actually want to achieve. The techniques that we're going to look at today are very powerful techniques and in fact they might seem a bit intimidating at first but they totally work. I've practiced with them myself and these I'm sure will serve you well for the years ahead. I'm, I'm frequently astounded these days at how effective it is and so I'm sure you'll find it as useful as I have. My name's Rob and here on METR we're all about helping Spanish speakers take their English from an intermediate up to an advanced level. If that sounds like something that you might be interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We're going to jump right in now with tip number one. Tip number one is write down your objectives. This seems like such a simple thing to do, but it makes all the difference. I mean, you can, you can think of your objectives, that's helpful obviously, but if you write something down, it somehow sends a message to the brain and makes it more concrete that this is something that you actually need to do and something that you must act upon in the months ahead. It's partly down to commitment as well. Somehow when you write it down, it makes it more concrete and it means that you're, you're kind of taking it seriously um, like, and, and you're ready to move and act upon it. The other benefit is it, it helps you to think about it a bit more, like decide if it's actually something that you want to do or is it maybe something that you need to adjust and change. Furthermore, when you're 3, 6, 12 months down the line, it gives you something that you can look back on and consider, have I achieved that objective and do I want to adjust, adapt or change it in any way? I'm frequently surprised when I look back on lists of objectives that I've made six months ago to discover that, oh wow, I, I've, actually, I've actually done that, you know, even if I haven't, maybe I haven't looked at it every day, things have still happened, I've taken the steps towards achieving them, but you've got to write them down. You also want to keep these somewhere where you can see them. Personally, I like to stick them on the wall in my office or in my, in my room so that when I wake up in the morning or when I sit down to start work, I can see them, they're in front of me and I know exactly why I'm doing things. Tip number two, be specific. Be very specific about exactly what it is that you want to achieve. You cannot be vague. By this I mean, when we're writing down these New Year's resolutions, the objectives for the year ahead, it's all too tempting to put down something very basic like I'm going to learn English or I'm going to live healthily. It's, it's just, it's not clear enough. It's, it's not clear when you read it exactly what it is that is going to happen or exactly what you're going to do. It kind of lets us off the hook a bit. It means that we, we, don't, we don't have to take it as seriously and you know maybe we can relax a little bit. There are, many ele there are many individual elements that go into being healthy and it's those that you've got to be specific about. So write down exactly what it is that is going to happen. What will that look like? So this could be something like I have lost three, I've lost three pounds or I have learned 3,000 words. By making it concrete in that way, it's sending again a message to your brain about what needs to happen for you to, in order for you to achieve that goal. Tip number three is focus on results and not on actions. If we go back to the previous example about, about becoming healthy, I, it'd be very tempting for me to write a goal like, I'm, I go to the gym three times a week or I eat healthily. Maybe we can achieve the goal of going to the gym three times a week at the end of week number one, right? But maybe the end goal that we want to achieve is actually something a lot more specific, like we want to be able to 
run three kilometers in 10 minutes or we want to lose three pounds or something like that. If you have an end goal where you can actually measure it, it means that you're much more likely to make progress towards something. Tip number four, you've got to write your goals and objectives in a present tense. By that I mean when we're writing our goals, the way most people do it is we write I will or I'm going to, right? As in, I'm going to go for a run every day, or I'm going to study English every day, or I'll, uh, I'll buy some English books. When you write goals like this in the future, your brain still isn't getting the message. It's like you're, you're, you're kind of putting things off until some hypothetical moment in the future. It's like, it's like well, when's it gonna happen? Well, I will do it, I'll do it someday. Who knows when, maybe next week, maybe the week after. There's no, sense of, uh, there's no sense of urgency in that. You've got to express your ideas about your objectives in a present tense. And you have to state it as though you have already achieved it, right? So if your goal is to learn a thousand words in the next three months, your goal is going to be, I have learned, I have learned a thousand words. And then you're going to put a date on it. Put a date on it. That's tip number five. If you, if you write your goal in the present tense and put a date on it, it's going to look something like, I have learned a thousand words. And then you put a date on it, 31st of March or in January at the moment. Tip number six, these goals that you're writing need to be flexible. If you put these objectives down and you find a month later that you ha that you haven't achieved them yet you know or in three months time you go oh you know put that down for the 31st of march and i, and I haven't gotten there yet that's okay don't be hard on yourself you, you it's okay to accept that uh, okay I, I, you can you can analyze again reassess and decide okay what went wrong there have i made progress towards the goals right this is this is a process that the fact that if you if you write down your goals, you're already doing a lot better than most people are doing because we kind of leave goals floating around out there in the universe and kind of hoping that they come true. And what we what what we should be doing is writing them down. I guarantee that if you write down these goals today, in three months' time, you will have found that you've made progress towards that goal. One of the first objectives I set in this way was when I first started learning Spanish, and I wrote down with skepticism, what I thought at the time was quite a ridiculous objective, which was I have learned 3,650 new words in Spanish. I'd read that you can learn 10 new words a day in a language, and by the end of the year, if you do the maths, you will have three, over three, three and a half thousand words. And lo and behold, it, it worked, you know? My, I, now I have people telling me like, how, how, how did you learn Spanish so quickly, or how did you learn French or Russian so quickly and easily. Uh, well, goal setting is a big part of that. Question of the day. I want to know what are your objectives in English learning or otherwise for the year ahead? Put them in the comments below this video uh, and I want to see them. I want to see them. Go ahead and put them down there. Share them with the rest of the group. Here on METR, we're all about helping Spanish speakers to take their English from an intermediate up to an advanced level. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you again. We're looking forward to a great 2021 here on METR. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.